We are astonished by your kindness and grace. You called us your treasure people. You sent your son to forgive and redeem us, even while we are ungodly and estranged from you. Even more, Jesus called us to share your gracious love with other ungodly sinners, whom you long to make beloved, treasure members of your family. Thank you. Help us to do, say, and be all in vision and will for us. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Your dear son called and sent the apostle to proclaim the good news, forgive sin, and heal those sorely wounded by the power of sin, evil, and death. Strengthen and equip your church to follow in their footsteps and to lead the ungodly to the one who died that they might live. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We plead on behalf of our persecuted sisters and brothers. Help us to speak in their defense. Aid them by prayer and material support. And live lives worthy of our mutual calling in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Please hear our prayer. Make this congregation lovely with holiness, faithfulness, generosity, and joy. Fill us with spirit so that we serve with the gladness and thanksgiving. Let our lives show the love of Jesus to those who need him the most. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayer. Churches everywhere are beginning to gather, worship, and serve in Jesus' name once again. Help us to be prudent and diligent. Be also bold and fearless. Make us so radiant with love for you and for your people that our actions encourage comforts and strength people most afflicted by illness stress, fear, and hardship. Lord, have mercy, hear our prayer. You are Lord and King over all nations. Causes our leaders to acknowledge our sovereignty and do your will for the sake of the people and trust to them. Grant that in this election year, candidates and voters desire and work for the good of all, not just for the favored few. Lord, in your mercy, Please hear our prayer. The gospel today is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching them their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First. Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Those twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go out among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go, rather, to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, 
proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Can I get somebody to just bless God with me? Hallelujah. We love you, God. We appreciate you, God. You condemn us in the midst of our sins. We thank you for all of God. Yeah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I love you, my life. I can't praise you enough.
to be together again. Let's pray together. Most good and gracious God, we thank you for this day. Bless our time together. Let it be fruitful. I decrease that you might increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. Oh, it, it is good to be together to share. I know that there's a lot going on in the world and I know that we are still out in the streets protesting across America and that our nation is in turmoil over just racism and police brutality and poverty. And I think all the things that we are seeing and all of the marches that we are seeing is a result of people's weariness and restlessness in the world that's around them. I don't think it's just one incident. I think it was an incident that took place that became the catalyst to the things that we are seeing today. But I think there's an underbelly of people tiring of being sick and tired. And so I think that's what you have around us today. And I wanna to speak to those things because I believe that we are people that don't shy away from our social responsibility as a congregation and as people in this world. And so um, I, the thing and the platform that I have been standing on is this idea that love is greater. And if there's some people around in your house, why don't you, uh, why don't you repeat that phrase with me? Love is greater. Uh, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. It starts off that text with this idea that for God so loved that he gave. Somewhere around 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, it ends this whole discourse on love and says these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of those three is love. I want to tell you a story. And maybe you've heard this story before, and I've shared it with you before, but it rings uh, true. A few years back, uh, I have asthma and I've been suffering from asthma since I was a child. And uh, I remember this this year, uh, uh, like the back of my hand, I was really, really sick and I was uh, uh, just having a really bad asthma attack. And I had been sick for a few days and finally my wife took me to the doctor. When I got to the doctor, uh, I was sicker again than what I thought I was. I don't know why somehow I think that I'm not as sick as I am. I think I could beat this thing, but I was really sick to the to the point where I couldn't go home and I had to have an oxygen tank to go home with me. I had never experienced asthma this way before, but I was really, really sick. I was really, really uh, uh, ill. I, I didn't have the capacity to breathe uh, just the way I normally breathe. 
and I had to have help from this oxygen tank to provide assistance for me. Well, when we got back home, I don't know what was going on, but I, I got up the stairs, uh, but as soon as I got up the stairs, Angela immediately fell sick. She started crying, she had a temperature, uh, and I don't know what was going on with her, but whatever was my problem no longer existed, and all of my attention turned to Angela. Now, I might mind you, right before then, I was weak, I had to have help up the stairs, I was on an oxygen tank, so I had the little tube in my nose, I, I was, you know, uh, my eyes were watery and red and itchy, and I was barely making it on my own. But somehow, whatever was my challenges, they ceased to exist at the moment that I saw my wife in pain and I saw her hurting and going through whatever it was that she was going through. I tell you the story to tell you this, that whatever mattered in my world was, wasn't important because she mattered more. What she was feeling and what she was going through mattered more than what I was experiencing and what I was going through. That is the moment I recognized that love is greater. That's the moment for me that solidifies this idea in my mind that love is greater. It wasn't that I felt better. It wasn't even that I wasn't sick anymore. What it was was she was on fire and she needed my help. And I was there to help her figure out whatever it was that she was going through. I say that to say this. I believe that if our world is ever going to change, it's not because we're better. It's because we've learned how to love. It's because we have figured out in our hearts that love is greater. There are two types of love that scripture, or a lot of types of love, but two in particular that comes to mind today. One is agape love. It is this idea of love, uh, uh, love that is without uh, restraints or unconditional love, if you will. It's love without conditions. It's not subject to the way that it's treated, but just because you were you, I love you. Another type of love is this love called phileo, which is the word we get Philadelphia from, brotherly love. It's a love that's extended one to another because we are family. You see, I believe that's the love that we ought to have one for another. I'm not going to hold on to the wrongs and the, and the isms and the schisms that you've done to me. I'm going to treat you as you are my brother or my sister because you are part of the human race. You are you regardless of who you are or what you've done. You see, that's the love that God has for us. How do I know it to be so? Because he gave his only begotten son. It's not like God had another one was like, all right, well, I'll sacrifice this one for this one. No, he gave his all so that all could have life. You see, when I think about the world and I think about all the things that are going on in the world, I think that's the requirement of us. To give our all. If we want to see change in the world that is around us, it's going to require us to be all that we can be. I can't reserve the best part of me for the best people in this world and the worst of me for the worst of them. That's not love. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave everything. And he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. That's love. I believe that if we're going to see the world change, it's going to be because we've learned how to love people. We've learned how to look past their thoughts, their isms, their schisms, their situation. And no matter how sick I am, I put someone else's needs in front of mine. 
I put someone else's thoughts and desires and wishes in front of mine. I'm not asking that the world be perfect. I recognize perfection is never going to happen here on earth. But if we're going to be better, it's going to be because we've loved. <laughs> if we're going to be greater, it's going to be because we loved. If we're going to see change in the world, it's going to be because we've learned how to love. So as I see it in the world that's around us, as I see it in my, through, through my limited lens, I think it has to be love. He says this in John chapter 15. No greater love than, than, than this, to lay one's life down for its friend. If we want to see racism end, love is greater. If we want to see our children have this, this hope and, and a future, love is greater. If we want to provide the next doctors and lawyers and teachers, love is greater. If we're going to have the, the next platform and, and next advocacy pieces in our, in our world, it has to be that love is greater. Red and yellow, black and white. Jesus loves all of the children of the world. My, my prayer for our church and my prayer for the world is that we learn how to love. When we learn how to love, we stop making differences. When we learn how to love, we stop having hidden agendas. When we learn how to love, it's not about me, but it's about we. When we learn how to love, we stop arguing and bickering about things that do not matter. Because at the, at the end of the day, your life matters more. That's what I want us to be about. That's, that's my desire. That's my prayer for our lives. That's what I've been thinking about over this last week. That's what I've been trying. I, 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 feel, I feel like this is the platform that I'm on and that I'm given. And I've been thinking like, Lord, what is my little place in the world that's around us? Here's my place. Love is greater. You want to know what, what your pastor believes? I believe that love is greater. You, know, you, you want to know where I stand on the issue and the matters? Love is greater. So you don't have to worry and wonder about where I stand. You know where I stand. And I think the greater question becomes, where do you stand? What is God calling you to? When I look from Genesis to Revelation, it is about God's love. God's all-encompassing love of redeeming people again and again and again and again. He started with redeeming the children of Israel. Then he goes all the way to redeeming the, 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 the Gentiles. That's an incredible story. And now here we are in the world again. And God's redemption is still about loving people into right relationship with him. So again, my prayer for you is that you come to know that love is greater. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you.